plans to go back to EastEnders? I'd like to go back to EastEnders. In fact, um, I got on very well with the guy who plays Charlie, Derek, and Mo, who was fantastic. They were so lovely. And in fact, Derek came to my book launch and he said he was going to talk to the producers because he said he wanted to get me back, you know, and they all say that, they don't, they don't mean it. So I don't know, I'll see, I'll see what happens. It might be nice. I mean, the, the character was left, in a way, open-ended, you know, I left, and it was a little bit ambiguous, but I could easily come back, you know, at some point. Who knows? Keep my fingers crossed, but I'd love to do it. I wouldn't like to go in it for a long time, you know, because it'd be like that treadmill again, but it'd be... It'd be great to do like a little six weeks and go out again and maybe be one of those characters that came back. Yeah, I'd love to. Just needs a lot of people to write into the BBC. Any more? No? What? There in your book, in the foreword, Colin Baker says he was left out. What would you have said about him if you said to me? Oh yeah, Colin Baker was left out because I haven't met him yet. And, um, well, no, I had left him out. That is the funny thing. I had met him. I had met him. He said, yeah, I did leave him out. I just forgot. <laughs> but um, he, he wrote about a funny story in the foreword of the book, um, which is his point of view. It's when we did Doctor Who Panto together, and that is going into the second book. So I'm going to write it from my point of view, because that was the panto that was like a Doctor Who panto in Southampton, which John Nathan Turner produced. Colin was playing Buttons. I was playing Prince Charming and Nicola Bryant was playing Cinderella. <laughs> so we had so many laughs doing that show. Um, I mean, it was just hysterical because we all got on very well as well, some of the stuff that went on on stage. So that's going to be virtually a whole chapter, or maybe half a chapter, talking about that because um, like I said Colin was a real prankster. And uh, I was trying to get my own back on him in that particular story in the book, but uh, as I said, I'm going to write it from my own point of view. I mean, that's <laughs> so you'll have to wait and see. But he is lovely, Colin, he is lovely. I, d I do like him a lot. Any other questions? <laughs> no, go on, we'll we've got one there. plans for you to work again with Big Finish on the audio? Yes, yes, I'm meant to be doing, um, yeah, I'm meant to be doing a whole series, you know that? I did a thing for them where Romana is narrating. The Companion Chronicle, yeah. The what? The Companion Chronicle. It was Steelers from Safe. That's it. Yeah. The Steelers from Safe, which I thought was an excellent story, and I had to do all the voices. Now, going back to your question earlier about the... Um, are you paying attention now or not? <laughs> um, just pay attention while I'm speaking to you, darling. That's all I ask. You asked that question about doing the big finish. Yeah. Now, the difference between that... You don't have to pay attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get you later. Um, was that that was that was kind of weird because we were all, as I say, actors doing these big performances and competing. But when I did the Steelers of Save thing, um, I was narrating and then doing all the different characters, which was very very difficult in its own way. But it was kind of nice because it was you know just me doing it, and I didn't I didn't have to worry about oh am, am I as good as Linda Bellingham or. Am I being as good as Louise Jameson? They're all so terribly good, you know. So I think I think that was more fun to do. And they they've got a whole series ready for me to do. I was meant to do one in June. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened. So this is a whole series of companion chronicles. Isn't About it? Romana. Yeah. Wow. But I've got my own adventures. So that was the first one. I think the writer who was gosh, name's gone. The guy who wrote it. He's done a whole series of Romana and Doctor and the Doctor. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But I haven't done them yet. I think I might run that next week. Yeah, chase it up. I'm going to chase it up. Yeah. My fans are baying. Yeah. Baying for the new series. <laughs> well, all one of them, anyway. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, love. It's I've nice. got points for a whole... Yeah, oh, wow. exactly. It's nice to have a good bit of Yorkshire support yeah. there. Even though it is South Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that brings us to 12 o'clock, Mary. It's been Does it really? God, time yeah. flies. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. So thank you very much. Not very, good. very talented. <laughs> Thing. Did I, say, I didn't say that. I can't remember what I said. Knock in, did he say knock into me then? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just me. Anyway, thanks a lot.
It's, it's, I love it. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Because you did that as well, we joked about it. But you cross you cross classic to new series. That's pretty cool. And Graham Harfer was, of course, as your director of both the stories. Yes. Yeah. Um, but your Daleks story with Colin Baker. We were talking about this last night, and 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 Terry, you were in it as well. What a really iconic story that is, because it was a bit out there, wasn't it? It, it wasn't. It was. Yeah. It, it actually was. Less of a doctor story than a Davros story. Mm. It, yeah. It, it was, yeah. It? yeah. The doctor didn't sort of. Yeah. No. It was a very, it was a very, dark. you know, dark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very gothic. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and Graham, you know, ran it that way. You know, beautifully. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it was. A lot of brave, brave move decisions yeah, yeah. made there, you know, and, and uh, to go with that. You know, Fantastic cast. Yes. yes. Alan, yeah. Eleanor Braun, yeah. Clive Swift, yeah. William Gaunt. Alexis Sale. Alexis Sale. Yeah. 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 Terry Malloy. Terry Malloy, Colin Terry Malloy, Colin Spall. Yeah. Spall. Yeah. Colin Spall. Colin Spall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was a really good story. So of um, of the three Davros stories you did, obviously, with the Remembrance, Revelation and Resurrection. Um, yeah, I mean, Genesis. Uh, yeah, not Genesis. Not Genesis. But, did you, uh, I mean, obviously you didn't know when you did the first one they were going to get asked back to do the subsequent ones, but did you think about a character sort of development throughout it and, and where Davros was going? Did you start to sort of, as you did the second and the third one, were you thinking about, right, what can I do with this character? Where can I take it? Is there something interesting happening here? Uh, when, I, when I was asked to do the second one, yeah, I mean, that's when I really began to think about it because I thought, well, I don't want to just repeat what we'd done um, when we did Resurrection, which was, in a sense, carrying on from where... Michael had sort of handed it over, and, and David. Um, we wa I wanted to find an element that was that was a beyond the rant, beyond the the Third Reich following <coughs> of the original uh, Genesis, which I mean, don't get me wrong, was fantastic. I mean, I think it's probably one of the better, best of the Davros stories, if not the best. And I wiped myself out of that as well. Um, and he did a cracking job setting that character up. Um, so yeah, I, I, and I was, uh, when we were talking about it, I said, look, you know, I'd just like to try and inject a bit of humour into it, a bit of black humour, be it, you know, so perhaps we got lines like, you know, sort of uh, the consumer confidence line when we were talking about dead bodies, you know, and dead, you know. Um, so yeah, it was beginning to develop that, as well as develop masks, because obviously the mask was, uh, you couldn't move inside the damn thing, you know, you really had to sort of pull your face around inside to try and get any movement on the outside. We didn't know the prosthetics that they've got nowadays. Yeah. And, and uh, Colin, obviously, how, how iconic is this? Daleks and Cybermen. Yeah, no, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But when uh, you were childhood friends with Graham Harper, weren't you? you, you yeah, you Graham and I um, were at drama school together from about the age of 11. So, no, for many and years. So, why do you think Graham shifted from uh, acting to directing? Was he a craft actor? <laughs> 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 he, was great. he was very good, was Graham. And he did an awful lot of work as a young man. Um, he just fell out of love with acting. He just wanted to get behind the camera, and, and he's been so successful. I mean, Thank God he did. Such you know? a nice guy yeah. as well. Yeah. Because I seem to, I mean, we all know Caves of Arzani won the, the best story of all time, and it, it was the first story where I was aware it was being directed. You know, you, yeah. you didn't yeah. really think yeah. of that before, especially with a show like Doctor Who, which obviously works on budgets and time constraints, and directors, I imagine, didn't have a lot of time to think about framing and moving the camera and doing stuff like that, but Graham was extremely inventive. Did you get a sense of that even early on, that he was going to have that kind of eye? Was he... Did he love, has he love, a love of cinema, for example? I mean, yes, yes. And he, uh, he, he always wants, and still wants to make a Western. Right. So hoping for a part in that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's keen on, on, on Western. But no, he's always liked film. He, 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 he does find that a, a great medium to work in. He loves yeah. it. Yeah. And Terry, um, what's your thoughts on Graham Harper? You've worked with him as well, obviously, in your Dalek story. So uh, what were your, did you think at the time, yeah, this guy, he's got something a little bit special? Absolutely. I mean, he's a delight to work with. I mean, because I, I, did, I did that one. Um, and then he asked me to do a Bergerac, you know, and uh, he asked me to play this film director. It was, it was a film within a film, if you like, where this film director was, they were making a feature film with Warren Clark, made this nasty Nazi in Jersey. Um, and there was a big insurance scam going on. So I was playing this, it was meant to be a, a, a camp American film director. Well, I don't do camp, as everyone knows. Um, so, uh, that makes a difference. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I said, no, I'm going to play him as a mad Irishman, which I did. And um, not only that, but I basically modeled it on Graham. Because Graham is this incredibly bouncy, energetic director. And he played in fact, where she said to me, look, here's a, here's a second unit crew, just background of shots. Whenever we're doing any shots, stuff, one in the background, just directing. So there was me and Pete McCulloch, who was meant to be my, my first. And we were just carrying on in the background. And it was like four or five days into the shoot, we got the rushes back. He said, you're doing me. <laughs> I said, yep. 
it's too late, can't do anything about it now. Yeah, it's in the but, can. He, but he got it, he got his own back because there was a party scene where we'd shot it, it was, it was full of page three girls and there was Peter and me dancing with these page three girls. And uh, at one point, one of the props people gave me this drink which had lots of umbrellas in it. Yeah. When he cut it together, he cut me and Peter McCulloch together dancing. <laughs> and he ran me out and gotcha. <laughs> So, uh, Colin, you did the Dalek story, and then but 20 years later, you get a call from Graham again, you know, yes. you want to come and do Doctor Who again. Yeah. So, um, are there any distinct, apart from budget, uh, the obvious differences that we can see on screen, what are the differences in terms of how television's made now to back, way back then? Well, the main, my main, um, the main reason, the, 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 I'll start again, the difference between when I did it um, 27 years ago and the new one is rehearsal time. When, when we rehearsed, we rehearsed uh, the BBC rehearsal rooms and we had a week, we all sat around a big table and, um, on the Monday morning and we read through it uh, and a rough timing was taken with the story. Um, then we all got up and we blocked it and moved it around. And then you start sort of trying to bring some sort of character. And at least you had that week to gel with your other actors to know what sort of, how they're going to play the scene and how you can play it back. And, and, and you had a lot of time to gel and, and, and give you, put some input in and Graham puts input in and then you say, no, I won't do it that way. And you come to a compromise and you do it that way. And then, but when you come to do the new series, it's a case of just getting down to Cardiff, learning your lines, and then you could probably get a couple of camera rehearsals and then uh, let's, let's do it, boys. And that is, that is the, um, the main difference. It's, it's yeah. the, and it's the same in any television these days. Not, yeah. uh, that you just don't rehearse anymore. Yeah. It's, it's that awful thing, you turn up on the set, you know, and you're introduced to somebody and the next minute you're you know, either doing a dying scene or a love scene. Yeah, you're, you're you've never had any, yeah, yeah. you know, input to do that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember the very first, uh, the very first uh, Doctor Who I did, you know, we were in the rehearsal rooms at Acton, this lovely old, you know, 27 story block, and everything was rehearsed there, you know. Yeah. You'd have to, you know, Mike Yard would show rehearsing next door and Morgan and Wise and floor <laughs> above, you know, and everything was done in these rehearsal rooms. And, um, and I remember it was a producer's run, and, and during the producer's run, he liked to have the Dalek, the proper Daleks with the full thing on, and the Dalek operators up to then a bit going down with just the bottoms on. Yeah. And I came down from lunch, and there was nobody in the rehearsal room, it was just the three Daleks sitting in the corner with their tops on, they were all, you know, um, to, you know, set up, ready to, to do the, to the you know, And I just wandered across the big mic script up. And as I walked past these Daleks, three eye stalks followed me around. <laughs> 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 I thought, wait a minute, these are my boys. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that time of rehearsal was really, really special. Yes, know? yeah, yeah. And, and that's gone now, sadly. Yeah. The way the, the, way the business has worked in terms of times and money and things like that. So, it, it, did you feel, coming back to the new show, Colin, there was there, there more pressure for time? I mean, obviously, they're really tight to get things done. Is, is there a bit more uh, pressure put on you as an actor? Yes, I think so. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, there it is. I mean, they, they've got to get it. They've got to come within budget, and they've got a certain amount of time to shoot, shoot that scene before they need to move on. Um, yes, there is there is pressure. Yeah, right. more so than when we did it. We had more time, as I say, 26 years ago. For both of you, experiences in Doctor Who, a sense of a lot of an, an actor's nightmare, and there's there's so much technical things going on. I mean, you're surrounded by Daleks that you know I'm sure bumped into things and you know all going wrong. And you had men in Cyberman costumes, Roger Lloyd Park in a wheelchair. Yeah. You know, it's like everything around you. It, it, does that cause what well, big problems doing that, or did it cause any problems on set? Um, no, I think there's some times with the Daleks all trying to get out of the door at once or something. One of it, one of it in that yeah. episode, in the story we did. Yeah. It crashed. Right. Yeah. But the thing I remember about um, when, we, when we went to the studio to start shooting Revelation, um, <laughs> you came out of the makeup room at the side, makeup room at the side of the studio. You yeah. came out with you know, like a cup of coffee and, 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 and the Davros head on, and he came out and he looked at me and said, oh, "Have I got a head on me this morning?" <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It was true. Yeah. That was before I was into makeup. Actually, <laughs> actually this is the mask. <laughs> Was it coffee through a straw when you get the, the mask on? Uh, no, you could drink it, but uh, I didn't actually drink it. I mean, there's an there's a iconic photo of floating around of me in a, just a t-shirt with a, a, sort of a cup of coffee. It actually wasn't a cup of coffee at all. It's a, it was a, a cup of food dye, right. which I would, they used just before we got into the chair and everything to black my tongue out. Right. So, um, so I just have to gargle or blah, 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 with this black food dye to finish off the process of you know getting everything inside the mouth black. How long does that stay on for? <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> still there. Right? Is, is it easy to wash off or does uh, it? No, 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 because it's a dye. I mean, it's you're out at dinner that night, you know, with your yes, wife, and, you know, it's, you know, everyone thinks you're dying of plague for these three weeks. You know. It's a very free. Handy around Halloween as well. Oh, absolutely. Too, right, yeah. It's perfect for that. <laughs> 
So Colin, um, it, uh, what other TV stuff have you done, that, apart from Doctor Who, you did Coronation Street you did many, many years many, ago. Many, we were yeah. sitting in the snog in the last of Gaudi last night, and I said, Edith Sharples know all of that. I did, I did uh, a Corrie with Dina. Yeah. Um, what was that like? I, mean, I know it was oh, many, many years ago. a long time ago. I can't really remember a great deal, but it must be 35, 34, 35 years ago, at least. At least. But I have actually worked since then. Um, <laughs> I was coming to that. I was like, oh, I'm hitting the icons. Um, am I hitting the icons? No, I'm hitting the icons. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, right, yes. Um, um, yes, I've done uh, like uh, Inspector Morse, um, Holby City, uh, all the usual things. Um, Casualty, um, a thing called Down to Earth I did. The last thing I did was a thing called The Inbetweeners. Um, Fabulous, yeah. It's, um, yeah, and, and movies, yeah, I've been, you know, sort of re working recently. Well. Cool. Good, good. And did, did, were you, did you watch Doctor Who before you were on it? Were you, uh, when you were young? I, I didn't actually make a point of watching it, no. I, I didn't watch it, to be, to be quite honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but then I knew I was in it, I mean, yeah, and I started sort of having a look. Right, did you know anyone in the same, Colin Baker? Did you, did you make, did you work, had no. you worked with Colin before? Uh, no, I, worked with, I worked with Colin, um, before I did Davros, because I did a uh, Cyberman story mm -hmm. as a real person. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, flesh done. Kind of, that was the first time I met with Colin and we worked together. So by the time we got to Davros, you know, we had quite a, a rapt war going anyway, you know. And he, you know, he's a great joker on set, on set you know, and uh, we had a lot of laughs, you know. And, uh, so yeah, and that's carried on, you know, I did Panto with Colin. A couple of years ago, I've been yeah. in Norwich. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so of course, you've both done Cybermen and Daleks. That's yeah, so yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was killed by a Cyberman. Well, a rather camp Cyberman. You know. <laughs> and this ah. guy had to come in and chop me, and it's more a case of, oh, die, you swine. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, no, can you hit him? Hit him. And eventually, he did nearly take my head off. You know, <laughs> and crashed across the floor. But I, that, that was the episode I discovered. that the, Do people realise that the TARDIS has got a self-cleaning system? Anything happens or anybody dies in the TARDIS, it immediately gets cleaned by the TARDIS itself. Because if you look very carefully at the attack of the Cyberman, at the end of So my experience of the show was always the case that uh, they would wait till the very last minute and then gradually say, yeah, you can do another series. So it was always a case of playing catch up, racing at the last minute, yeah. get started on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, was, that was the experience. Yeah, yeah. So you felt that was just situation normal, really? Normal uncertainty? Absolutely. That, that was part of my whole experience of yeah. coming in like that. Yeah. It is a shame because I mean, I mean, I always feel. Um, I mean, it's a great opportunity because um, Adrian Mitchell, um, you know, famous play, play like whatever, um, was the next and they said, oh, Sylvester so McCoy, like this show. And then, so I thought I'd ask you about it, but um, I can't remember what it was but it would have landed in now. Can we get someone else to do <laughs>
I'm a cocky leaky, is it not? Oh, what's all about cocky leaky? I don't know, yeah, obviously what? Leaky cool crap. Where I come from, it's the noon. That's correct. Oh, you cool. Okay. In what year did Ted first appear in Doctor Who? In 1981, 1984, or 1985? Five. Wrong. Oh. 84. Oh. <laughs> 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 the bar staff to the bar staff the bar staff to the bar the bar to the bar staff the bar the bar the bar the 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 Oh, right, yeah. Evil character. <laughs> <laughs> How much more evil? 